The next thing we're going to look at is some land use classification. We've got a crop area here where we uh, were asked by one of our clients to, to, to go through and try and estimate the total acreage, the uh, actual agricultural acreage of this, this particular parcel. And they were interested in not only the crop area, but also acreages for the tree forest area. And also they wanted us to find the water within that same section. The next slide is the first pass segmentation against a LIDAR intensity image. You'll be able to see it's, it's a very high fidelity polygon data set. Uh, the, the rules that were set up for this processing were, were set up to try and define as much information as we could from, from the forested area and the crops. And we're going to go through the different process steps as we go along here. So this would be the original segmentation. The next image shows the a, a rule based calculation of the crop area in yellow so this is taking is that were defined within the rules as crop and, and merging them into a single layer and as you can see it's doing a nice job here of identifying just those areas uh, there is some areas along the edges where there this is actually being caused by shadowing from the trees and that was occurring in the imagery input this LIDAR intensity data set that's overlaid does a better job because it's a, in essence, a true nadir view of the of the tree locations of, of helping us to pull those shadows back to the actual tree canopy location. These are the, in green would be the tree area. As it comes up, you'll see this one's actually overlaid with a color infrared false color image. So with the image overlaid, you can see now we have the cropland the forest area and the, the water all grouped within the three land classification areas that we were looking for. And once these rule sets are, are generated, we're able to apply this across large areas. So we're not necessarily just looking at analyzing a single farm. We're looking at taking these rule sets once they're developed and, and pushing them against entire counties or potentially even states of, of imagery and LIDAR data and calculating all of this in a single pass. And the final slide here is the same data set that's gone through some additional GIS processing to smooth and refine the edges. And uh, this is this is of course more like what our end users, our clients are used to working with. So we have maybe taken some of the some of the information away in order to get to this polygon data set, but it is a more usable feature data set uh, and again something more like what they would be so as we go on to the next slide, just kind of a wrap up of some of our findings as we went through these two applications, the impervious and agricultural, agricultural analysis. On the impervious side, the uh, automated versus manual, obviously because it's, it's automated versus manual, there's a huge uh, savings in, in actual labor that's involved. So we estimated that to be somewhere around a 20 times reduction in labor, total labor. Area calculations were within 10% of our ground truth, which was well within our expectations. The uh, one thing that we also found is that, and John alluded to this when he was talking, being inputting thematic input such as parcel, existing parcel information, or even existing land classification information, both increases the speed and the accuracies. So that's a nice thing about defending software is that you're not just talking about imagery inputs or elevation inputs such as LIDAR, but you can also have existing GIS data sets put into the, into the analysis. And then of course, uh, LIDAR did a great job of helping to improve the results of, of both analysis. Uh, some more things that we found along the way, the, uh, the uh, classifications as far as the forest and crop, those were quite easy to do. Our, our, some of our next steps will be to try and see if we can expand those land use classifications beyond just the three that we were looking at. We feel confident we'll be able to do that. These are from the next slide, Gregor. Uh, the other thing that we're actively working on with Finians is trying to uh, expand this into more of a high throughput or clustered processing environment with terabytes of imagery and LIDAR inputs. Ideally, we would be able to spread this across vast numbers of CPUs uh, and have this process come out in, uh, in a shorter amount of time. So that would be an obvious next step. As these projects, these large area projects uh, have subsequent year recollects, uh, we will 
course, looking at doing some change detection over those different year, those different collection years, and we're also looking at uh, environmental monitoring with with these inputs. And uh, there's also some obvious security applications that could be could be done with uh, with imagery and lidar. Thank <laughs> you.